Hi, welcome back to the channel and video number 99. Today we'll be doing part two of a video we did back in 2018 on Ralph Inkster's RV6A with SDS EFI. So we'll have two cameras on the airplane this time and we'll also be uh, doing data logging with the laptop. Hopefully uh, you'll find this interesting. So this is Ralph Inkster's RV6A. This was uh, made up of uh, salvaged airframe. He put uh, RV7 tail feathers on it. His power comes from a standard Lycoming 0360 with a fixed pitch Sensenich prop on it. And he's also got uh, RV7 wingtips on it. So we're just going to go over the uh, switch layout here for the EFI. In the uh, upper left here we've got the lean rich mixture knob. Over here we've got the uh, injector selector switch. So this switch is uh, injector function from the main over to the auxiliary if required. And uh, this is the switch for the programmer, main and auxiliary. So that's uh, basically hooked up to the programmer here and that allows you to access either the main ECU or the auxiliary ECU. Uh, lean of peak switch. And this is uh, auxiliary and main battery power. So he's got two batteries here. One is the main and one is the auxiliary. We've got a uh, voltage meter here. And this switch here allows you to check voltage on the main battery and the auxiliary battery. And here we've got the other EFI switches which are nearby. These are the uh, coil switches. So for number one coil and number two coil. Number one fuel pump and number two fuel pump. Uh, starter switches here. And we've got the usual split uh, battery and alternator switch here. And down here we've got the Ballinger Motorsport AFR 500 version 2 wideband uh, air fuel ratio meter. This uses an NTK sensor instead of the usual Bosch type. And we're just uh, doing an evaluation of that to see how it works. We'll be uh, looking at that quite a bit in the flight here. And we're hoping these have better anti-lead uh, fouling characteristics compared to the Bosch sensors. And this is the setting that uh, we used for the uh, wideband gasoline AFR is measuring 6 to 1 to 20 to 1 air fuel ratio and we'll show you the jumper settings here next for that. So here's the instruction sheet for the jumper position and we're going to uh, connect uh, the jumpers here on number 2. And that's uh, for this one here which we uh, had in the earlier frame. 6 to 20 gasoline air fuel ratio. Okay, normal start. Master's on. Fuel pump, two coils, brakes.
So here's a screenshot from the data logging system and uh, this is uh, a switch from normal running here to lean of peak. You'll see this uh, edge here. So we can look at the uh, numbers here as I run the cursor over this. You can see the ignition timing, uh, injector duty cycle, air fuel ratio, manifold pressure, RPM. And these are the colors up here. So red for RPM 
green for air fuel ratio, white for map, light blue for ignition timing. Uh, we've got throttle position in gray and injector duty cycle. And uh, in blue is the air temp. So we're looking here at uh, air fuel ratio. And uh, in the lower left there, you'll see this change. It's around uh, 12 to one here. And uh, ignition timing here in the blue line. Uh, look down here again, and it's about uh, 27 before top dead center. And when we uh, switch the lean of peak switch here, we see the air fuel ratio go from about 12 to about uh, 15 to one here. And at the same time, right when you switch it, the ignition timing also advances from 27 to 32 degrees. So we're adding five more degrees of timing when we go lean of peak. And I uh, see the RPM stays pretty constant here, even with the switchover. And this is with a fixed pitch prop. So uh, we're making pretty much the same power, apparently, uh, going lean of peak with uh, the advanced timing here. One thing uh, that is an anomaly here, we noticed uh, the uh, air temperature, intake air temperature here, it's got a tremendous amount of scatter to it. This should normally be uh, an essentially straight line or very gentle line as it changes here. We've got uh, massive spikes. And if we uh, look down here to air temperature and I run the cursor over, we see this is going from like minus four, plus 23 over, you know, 32. It's all over the place. So we've got a problem here with the air temp sensor or the wiring, the connection or something like that. It should be stable and it's not. And it's also causing this scatter in the air fuel ratio here. This should be more stable than it is here. Every time there's a spike here, the computer responds thinking it's either hot or cold. And the air fuel ratio is uh, jumping all over too. And we've got one more screenshot from later in the flight here. And uh, we're just uh, switching Lena Peak switch again. And you can see with a little more clarity a couple of things here. So air fuel ratio here, if we look down in the uh, left hand corner again, we're at about uh, 16 to one. And we flip the switch off. So the air fuel ratio here goes to about 12.6. Ignition timing, of course, changes from uh, about uh, 32 lean of peak back to 27. And we'll see right at the point of switching the injector duty cycle changes here from uh, 20% up to about 27. And we've got the lean of peak switch set at about 25% uh, reduction. So it leans 25% and adds the five degrees of timing here simultaneously. That's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching.